the aquarium of the house is kept. So to, to start us off, I'm going to request uh, from where we come from. You, you would have realized with the choir singing, from where we come from, we've been taught that in anything we do, we seek first the kingdom of God. From where we come from, we are taught that before we start anything else, and where I come from in Limpopo, they say, and for us to be able to do so and respect that protocol, I'm going to ask you, Pastor Francis, to come and open for us and pray. Fundus. Can we all come listen and pray? Can we bow our head? Heavenly Father, we thank you on this painful day and yet a day of celebration where we've come to celebrate the life of our beloved father, the life of our beloved grandfather and friend. Lord, we pray that your spirit and your presence will be with us, O oh Lord, as we continue this program. We thank you and we know, Father God, that it was your will, O oh Lord, because nothing happened by accident. We thank you, Father God, and we appreciate you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor. Um, you may be seated. I'd, I'd like to welcome everyone here present this morning. Thank you very much for making time to come and celebrate. Um, we have chosen as an organization that we are not here to mourn the life of Kevin. And, and appropriately so, we are requesting that please don't mourn Kevin today. We, we are here to appreciate him. We are here to celebrate and pay homage to the Gavin Watson that we know. Now, in terms of, of house rules, I'm going to request that um, if you're really expecting a call from God, put your phone on silent. If you really, really have to take that call. Uh, we're going to try and keep it very short so that we're not inconvenience you. We know you are very important people. So, so if, if uh, you don't know how to do so, rather switch it off. If you don't know how to do so, leave it outside. Uh, it, it, it will be helpful. And this is a church, and for those of you who have a tendency of smoking, you please do that uh, at your own leisure in the parking lot. So you go and kill yourself in peace, we don't have an issue with that. In terms of uh, bathrooms, through the back, there is a, an, a arrows that will be able to show you where the bathrooms are. But on the outside as well, there are bathrooms that are available to be used there as well. So I'd really appreciate if we can, if we can keep that. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to pay homage and to celebrate the life of Gavin Watson, our group CEO. Very few people would uh, know that not only was he a CEO, people call him Uncle Kelly. And, yeah, okay, for those of you who would not know what that means, so I see a lot of you who would know. Uncle Kelly means leader. He was our leader, he was not chosen, and he was chosen by God to lead us. O Kevin was, for those, some of, them, some of us would call him Umshegas. People, people will call him um, He was our father, he was a husband, a brother, an uncle, a grandfather, a father-in-law, a friend, a mentor. And for those that uh, we will, we will uh, be speaking, some of them will attest to what I'm talking about. If you see the picture that we put up here, it's, it's not just there. Kevin had a smile. Kevin wore a smile every time. And that is why you see the pictures here, because that is the person that was. Well, I think, I've, apart from me, he's probably the next best dressed. <laughs> I 
as our leader par excellence, a very stern man, yet supportive and very compassionate. He always spoke about people, he always spoke about passion, and he spoke about purpose. In the bulk of the time that we had interacted with him, those three words epitomized the person that he was. Um, we have in our company MBA graduates, and yet he was never an MBA graduate. And those are some of the things that we, we, we speak about that very few people know. This is the same guy who loved and adored God. If there's one thing that we were taught uh, is that when I joined this company, yeah, I was an occasional. And, and contrary to popular belief, he, he tried to make sure that some of us understand our work with Christ. And, and for that, we are forever grateful. But, and, and, and interestingly, and I'm sure most of you are clever people here, is that I want to find out, and if, if there's one, uh, please come and see me. How many companies you know in this country and all over the world that would put God in the center of whatever they did? Whether it be the church, whether it be its society, whether it be the football team, well, football teams, um, um, Pirates is losing badly. Mary is not well, but I doubt if they pray. They probably use juju or something. But contrary to what is being spoken about, people don't know that the, pray, the prayer meetings were not taking place at head office. They were taking place in the length and breadth of this country. We had staff that were working in correctional facilities. In the 12, 13 years that we've been there, we've never had a fatality, and not because of anything else, but because we put God at the center of what we did. And those are some of the things that we thought it is important that as we pay homage today, people understand where we come from. At this stage, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to hand, uh, we're going to have a, a eulogy. Uh, I'm going to ask Roth. Roth is Gavin's son, for those of you who don't know. Valance is Gavin's brother. And Jared is Gavin's nephew. And the three of them can come up and render the eulogy, and we'll take it from the legend gentlemen, uh, Roth, Valence, and Jared. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see how long I can keep us together. So please, if I... Uh have a moment of uh, weakness, just on a cheer me on or clap or shout or something. All right, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Roth Watson. I'm Gavin's firstborn and only son. Firstly, I'd like to thank you all to come here today celebrating the life of an incredible man. The past few days have been exceptionally hard on our family. I have the overwhelming support. and make an attempt today to capture the true essence of my father. However, I'm sure words will always fall short as just so much to this incredible human being. Gavin Joseph Watson, born on the 12th of July, 1948, left us earlier this week to go to heaven. When reflecting on my father's life and who he was as a person, there are a few very distinguishable, distinguishable characteristics that come to mind which I'd like to touch on this morning. I believe these, for me, help me remember him best. His immense love and faith in the Lord. Dad's love for the Lord was so deep, so pure, and his faith absolutely unshakable. His love for the world, his love for the Lord.
some time, uh, potentially at the gym on a treadmill, maybe shopping and picking pay for groceries. Um, but no matter where it was, the end result is we had to close in prayer with everything that we did. Sometimes making some occasions a bit bizarre, I imagine praying out loud to God in the middle of a shopping aisle in Woolworths or Virgin Active while you're training or doing something else. Dad, to miracle mornings. Every morning, Monday to Friday, for 20 years, it might be more, Papa, but I assume 20 years, um, Dad and his African global family would get together every morning and seek the face of God. Dad believed that the foundations of your faith are built in the quietness of the mornings. Dad always used to quote his father, my grandpa Dan, the family that prays together stays together. And that can very clearly be seen by his directorship in the business that he's worked with for so many years. The Global Smart City Campus. The African Global Campus was Dad's pride and joy. If you've come and experienced the African Global Ecosystem, you'll very quickly see that it's littered with prayer plants of verses from the Bible, or just his favorite verses generally. My favorite one being is as you enter the park, uh, the prayer clock that sits at the front reception box says blessed on the way in and blessed on the way out. My last heart, heartfelt memory of Dad's love for God has been as relative as been as a relatively new parent. So I'm a new dad, I've got a four year old, a two year old, my sister and a husband of two beautiful kids as well. Um, one year old, or steady is one and a half, and Lulu's three years old. One of the fondest memories I've had to date is my father wanting to teach the kids his, one of his favorite verses in the Bible. Very simple verse, but it's an all-encompassing verse. Uh, and to see it play out and unfold over the last six months is absolutely beautiful. It was the Lord's Prayer. Every night, he would come to our house and he would sit with the little kids. First at my place, then at my sister's place, and we would say the Lord's Prayer from top to bottom. This took a while, of course, with the younger kids absolutely being more interested in Peppa Pig on Netflix, so it didn't quite work. But uh, after 30 days of back and forth and uh, really trying to just pray with the little ones, eventually uh, Carter and Lulu were able to say the Lord's Prayer perfectly. Gavin's unfathomable kindness. Dad's kindness was a kindness like no other. Nothing that I've experienced, nothing I've seen, it's just immeasurable. If a friend was in despair, no matter who it was, he would always go out of his way to try and console that person, to try and help them with whatever they're struggling with or battling with their life. A couple of examples of his kindness range from the, the creches that we've been supporting in Orange Farm. I think there's 30 creches with little children that have sort of just been left to uh, left to rot away. Um, at one point, we were supporting 30 creches. We were supporting a safe home in Cape Town for abused children. And there were many soup kitchens and a whole bunch of other uh, facilities that were set up to just look after people who were less fortunate. I still remember sitting and having lunch two years ago discussing a pro bono project. And questioning that Dad, you know, sometimes your kindness can be taken for naivety and maybe seen as weakness. Uh, the project that you're looking to engage with, the one to look at, maybe you should think through it more deeply and make a decision at a later point. The true Gavin Watson style, and with a response back by the Bible, he said, Wrath, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Why don't we pray about it? fast and let God decide. <laughs> Gavin's discipline, tenacity and mental grit. My father is probably one of the hardest working men that I've encountered or engaged with. His discipline was military-like. When dad set his mind to something, before it had even been unfolded or project been registered, meant he had already seen the end result and had completed the task ahead in his mind. There was always a pursuit for excellence with everything that he did. 
no matter what it was, whether he was training, whether he was working, whether he was building a new project, a new business, a new idea, a new brand. Excellence was the only option. With his deep competitive desire, whatever, whatever the group did, they always had to be market leading and pioneers in whichever field that they were playing in. A few months back we were sitting, having lunch, in the capital of a major East African country, reflecting on an opportunity that could potentially change the lives of tens of thousands of people. I looked at him and I said, Dad, do you really believe that we can put this together? The environment was incredibly tough, massive amounts of complexities. However, the end result would have changed the lives of so many people, and the results failed far and wide. He smiled at me and said, Roth, whatever you do in life, work, work, work with all your heart is working for the Lord and not for man. Potentially reverted back to one of his favorite verses in the Bible, Colossians 3.23. Dad's main objective was always to see how he could make a difference in the world by using his three Ps, the three Ps that are behind us, the three Ps that built the foundation for his life, and the three Ps that he really just believed so deeply in. People, passion, and purpose. Transforming and developing people, injecting passion and energy into the environment, and always making sure that the purpose was much bigger than the person or the people themselves. Dad lived an incredible life, full of God's favor. However, so much joy came from the amazing people that he engaged himself with every single day for so many years. His pillars of strength, or, sorry, excuse me, he loved them all very dearly. And as they were his prayer warriors, sounding boards, pillars of strengths, friends, mentors, wise counsel, and family. Joe, Papa, Tandi, Trevor, Jackie, Ish, Munira, thank you for loving my dad so dearly. Louis and Colleen, Donnie and Gail, Jacques and Kerry, Karin, Rico, Carlos, Lindy, Tash, Nicholas, Mendisa, Elise, Ryan, Vince, Dr. Kota, Dr. Nasser, and Sivian. His prayer warriors, Cynthia, Diane, Pastor Francis, and the rest of his African global family. Thank you for loving Gavin and serving alongside of him. He truly loved you with all his heart and was so blessed to be amongst such incredible people on a daily basis. Close my eulogy of Dad, I'd like to read a very dear psalm of his, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I like nothing. He makes me lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you to everyone who came out here today. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate you celebrate an incredible man uh, who lived a very rich and full life. Uh, and uh, let's enjoy the occasion. Let's celebrate his life. And uh, thank you very much.
because it was he loved the Lord his God above all else. Then his family, then himself and his neighbors. He had an incredible love for his family, his brothers, sister, children, nephews, godchildren. And that's, that's what he was. So he wasn't a difficult man to understand. Uh, Gavin was born in a little village called Komadacha to parents that were practicing Christians, farmers, and ran a trading store. My father was of both Afrikaans and Scott background. My mother was of Italian and English background. But that never occurred to Gavin to be of any consequence because he saw himself as African and so did we. He never harked back to where we came from in Europe. That wasn't an issue because he was here and Gavin didn't think about the past. His life was always led in the present and into the future. a cross-country runner of note. He was a sportsman, he was a leader, and that's the way he was throughout his life. And when he put down his rugby togs, he went into training. He loved being at the gym and being fit. He was a nightmare to keep up with. None of us could. We tried many times, Ronnie and Gavin, uh, Ronnie and Cheeky will tell you one day, uh, it was, a, it was a, a, a December, and we knew that he hadn't been training as much as he had, and we had. So we decided we would take him for a run. We hadn't told him, we said, look, this is going to be like a relay. We'll wear him down and we'll beat him. So the idea was, after Gavin Chicky was the, was the fittest, but we would start, Ronnie and I would start, and in Portlises, there's a boat place called Willows, and from there to our house would be about 20 k's. So we started out, it wasn't long, and Ronnie and I gave up. This was it. Cheeky and Gavin then ran far, and we had really done our best, and he beat us. But that's the way he was. He could not give up. The word give up just wasn't in his vocabulary. The word love was in his vocabulary. The word of concern yourself about your fellow man was uppermost in his mind. My father was not only a farmer, he was a lay preacher. And that's where this came down from, from the, to us, from our parents. We, Gavin was born in Samastis, as I said, and we farmed for years in, in the Komadakha district, and then we went to Palestine. My father bought a farm there. And once again, Gavin was the man he was, and people realized in Palestine what we were. And to this day, I heard that there was a, a, uh, a uh, interview on TV, and they'd gone back to Palestine. It was so nice to know that people remember who and what we were. They hadn't looked at the media and said, this is who the Watsons are. They know us for who they are, and they know Gavin for who he was. I don't want to belabor the point, but I want to say this, that Gavin was a man of no God. He had an attitude, forgive and forget. Of all of us, if Gavin had one fault, one fault, he was too trusting of everybody. Uh, Gavin believed, and we do believe, in the inerrant 
infallible. He was an easy man to know. What more is there to know that he loved the Lord, the God above? He, the Lord is God above all else. His neighbor is himself. What more? His whole life was done to bless people. And he was a family man and he was a friend. And when he gave his all, he gave his all. It wasn't half measure. And when he left Port Elizabeth and came up to Johannesburg, he developed another family, the Busasa family. And he saw them as his family governed it. And he never wanted anything but the best for the Busasa family. Man, he would go on and on and on about the people of Busasa. That was what he spoke about. Other things didn't interest him. If he went on holiday, we would, the one thing he would do was train. It was train and prayer. And I don't like getting up at half past four in the morning. But we'd have to be because he was, he was umkulu. So we'd have to have prayer meetings. And that was his holiday. It was prayer meetings. It was the, he then go to the gym. And he goes to sleep early at night. And that was it. And in between, his phone never stopped ringing. His Basasa family would be phoning. All the, if they weren't phoning him, he was phoning them. That is a little bit of what my brother Gavin was. Uh, some, some days ago, well, last week or so, he... Uh, got a, I think an email or something from a journalist and it angered me because what was this person wanting to know from Gavin when he knows the hateful, toxic articles that he's written over the many, many years? Gavin's response was, I think I should send him a, a SMS that says, or WhatsApp that says, Jesus loves you. I said, on no account will you do that while I'm here. Because I couldn't get to the place. But with him, that's what he was. And, you know, we grew up in a family that didn't understand until we got a little older that there were these differences in people. You see, because in our family, that started in Kumadacha and then went to Alicedale. There were people that would call my father Um Dan and my mother Tani Bobby. There were people who called them Uncle Dan and Uncle Bobby, but there would be those that would call them Untlokatol and Unondwang. Those people were treated equally in our home. We didn't understand when we got to school later we started to realize, but there was a bit of a difference. So that's how we grew up. Love is what the center of our universe was, and Gavin especially. Anybody that knows us will tell you, Gavin's heart was extremely soft. He was a powerful man, physically incredibly powerful. And as I say, we always tried to compete and became of second best. Mentally incredibly strong, would never give up. I, can go on. I, I could go on for hours about this man, but I don't want to bore you people. So, when I read something here, it's because that's what he would have wanted. I can tell you, when this happened, after the years of persecution, we were angry. To say angry is to, is to not even get to the understanding of what we felt. And Gavin said to me some time ago, he said, you know, you, you know, Valence, what I don't like about all of this. The attack on me is affecting the whole family and the whole of Busasa. He says, my directors are under attack because of me, because of my name. I said, but Gavin, but that's a lie. We've been under this attack since 1975, for heaven's sake. Did you expect it was going to abate because of the general election in the early 90s? Forget it. 
because evil abounds in the world and the heart of man is desperately wicked. We know that. And you have to work against that. And what bothered Gavin towards the end, but I would say for the last 18 months to two years, was the vicious, callous, caustic press that was out there. Not just for Gavin, but was creating an environment of racism where the races would want to tear at each other. This bothered him, but he could not understand. But understand that is the devil, and we would debate that. God has a different story for this country. And that's what Gavin would have wanted me to say. He didn't say it to me, but I know his heart. That this country has a great future. We actually are not the racist people purport us to be. The media would create that environment. But we're a loving na nation. To give an instance, we were, my wife and I were in, in London a few years ago. In one week we saw two ugly race incidents. Very ugly. We were invited to my brother's family, in, uh, my sister-in-law's family in, 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 uh, in, in America. My wife and I saw so many racial incidents. Well, I haven't seen one of those in this country for many years. Except, as uh, some of you have seen that, or heard that audio. We will not give it any credence in this place. Not with us. Because that's not South Africa. We are not proud of racism. We despise racism as South Africans. We despise the people that are trying to create an environment that we tear at each other. We will not because we're Christ-centered as a family and as a country. I want to read to you a, what I thought reflect something of Gavin. I thought I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to, I was going to ask his godson to come and read it for me because I might have not been able to make it through. Romans 12, 14 to 21. Blessed are those who persecute you. Blessed and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. That was Gavin. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no evil for evil, but give thought to what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, to the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink, for by doing so you will be burning coals on his head. Do not, and I stress, this was Gavin. Do not overcome, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And we're a country of that. We do not subscribe to evil. We subscribe to good. And that is why we're so happy to be in this place today. I won't go further on the next scripture, but it reminds, what reminds me of Gavin is Stephen when he's stoned. And he's been stoned for his Christian faith, mind you. And, and Gavin has been pilloried and attacked and maligned because of his Christian faith. And that would hurt him most. He, he didn't like the way that his Basasa family was being attacked. What was even worse is that the attack was on the Christian faith. We were a, fa we were a family that prays. We were taught that. We will continue to pray because the Bible says, pray without ceasing. But we took it more lightly. We'd pray from time to time and once a day, maybe twice a day when we went to sleep or we woke up in the morning. He prayed all day. He took it very much to heart. Is that wrong? Does that make us a cult? Does that make Gavin a bad man? 
I dare to say not at all. So when Stephen is stoned, he calls out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold the sin against them. And when he said this, he fell asleep. That was Gavin. And in ending, you know, Roth went and stole something from me. Because I didn't know what Roth was going to say. But when the Lord prays said, you know, there's something about language. Some things are best said in a certain language. And if you say the Lord's Prayer, English is not the right language. The error is the herder. That is how you say it. He sal my nie ombreek nie. He laat my neerle in groen weithelde. And that's where Gavin is. And then again, if you say goodbye, there isn't another language. And Dimpa Ani will know that only too well. It's not Sutu Dimpa. It's just Klaus. Lala Ngulkal Mkulua. Lala Ngulkal. Hambagashe Mkulua. Hambagashe. Just before Jared um, renders his eulogy, there's a BMW DN74PL. Your car is idling. So you, you see, if we don't want you to say it was stolen, we are giving it away. So DN74PL, it's a BMW. Please go and attend to your vehicle. Jared? Thank you everyone who's come here today. I know it's not feeling like much of a eulogy. I thought this would be a few minutes and we're half an hour in. But just forgive us for the length of time. We're all here to celebrate the life of Gavin Watson or to provide support to those who are grieving or perhaps to find out if the conspiracy theories are true and he's actually alive and sitting here somewhere. He is alive and he's seated with the Father. because our hearts are in pain but as Papa said this isn't a tragedy that Gavin did not go too soon or too late he was called by Christ when his work was done he was 71 years old when God took him home but you'd not be able to tell it by looking at him and he'd remind you of that often Matthew 6 19 says do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Gavin's heart was not for things of this world, but for the Father. If you walked around his townhouse, as I did a few days ago, all you would see is a bunch of Bibles he received as gifts from people that he had helped. Notes written inside from people I didn't know. Strangers in need. His riches were stored in heaven and his inheritance is the lives in this room. Of people he prayed with, people he prayed for. Lives he influenced for the good of the kingdom in any way. For the majority of his life, Gavin fought for the freedom of the people of this country. Since the 70s, he and his brothers have fought for the belief that our country will never be prosperous or free until all our people live in brotherhood, enjoying equal rights and opportunities. 
They did this without selfish ambition. They did it merely inspired by the words of Christ to love your neighbor as yourself. For this he endured persecution to the point of assassination attempts against him and his brother's lives. In 1979, a man walked up to Gavin and plunged a knife into his chest. He died twice on the operating table that day, but it was impossible for death to keep his hold on him, for his work was not done. He never feared the prospect of death, for standing for whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure. For as John 15, 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. I look at the youth today, and you think how trivial the stresses in our lives are. But there was a time in this country, not that long ago, when 90% of the country weren't even classified as citizens. Where it was a crime for white and black people to interact. Where supporting change was treason punishable by death. I remember as a child, Gavin and his brothers having to hide Duncan Village Massacre and Freedom Charter t-shirts all over the house because the punishment just for distributing those shirts would be jailed for years. Many of you in this room lived that same reality where something so trivial had massive consequences. Where you're considered a threat to national security just for playing sport with someone of a different skin color. Gavin's life was one of generosity. His only goal in creating wealth was that he may use it to invest in the lives of others. He gave the fruit and kept only the basket. In the 70s, the family used their businesses to smuggle young activists in and out of South Africa and to provide financial support for mechanisms of political change. Gavin's life for me is best summed up by Philippians 1.19. For I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but I will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For me to live is, uh, is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through my being with you, with you again your boasting in Jesus Christ will abound on account of me. That is Gavin. He eagerly awaited when he may be united with the Father. But his great love while here was to pray with people and to pray for people and to use what he had to honor the Lord. He took such pride in Basasa and the directors and employees of the company. I won't mention any by name, but you know who you are. Please know that you are loved. that you are valued, that your role in being a part of this business, that I was able to contribute to the education of so many, to support crashes around the country, to bring about economic empowerment, to invest in charitable organizations, particularly Christian causes. It brought him so much joy. And yes, if he's guilty, he supported the ANC, which he had done since the 70s and never shied away from. The same media that vilified Gavin and his brothers in the 70s and 80s has vilified Gavin and Bosasa recently. They've been used as political means to serve a political end, with no concern being paid for the good works being destroyed in the process. Now think about the youth centers, where children with troubled pasts were taken, given an education, where spiritual leaders would invest into their lives and well-being. Who will provide the service when Bosasa is gone? Who will show those children the same care and consideration? I pray someone does. For the consequences will be felt for generations if no one does. A friend sent me a scripture which, which I believe echoed Gavin's life recently in some ways. Isaiah 53. He was oppressed and afflicted. He did not open his mouth. 
He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so did he not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of this generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. We mourn, saying, I wish it had been easier in his last days, but don't mourn for him. I asked him recently how he was dealing with all the stresses that he was going through, how it compared to the 70s and 80s when they were dealing, when they were activists in the anti apartheid struggle. And he laughed and said, how do you compare a media attack on him to the persecution of a whole country? God had conditioned Gavin over a long life to be able to withstand far more than this attack, I assure you. But where he is, in heaven, or apparently Dubai, he is not concerned with the views of man. History is being rewritten as we speak. George Orwell said the most effective way to destroy people is to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their own history. And that is happening as we speak. The media has perpetuated this idea that for people to come together and pray in prosperity for this country and its people qualifies you as a cult. That there is something sinister in meeting in one accord and making your request known to God. This is not an attack on Gavin. It's not an attack on Bosasa. It's an attack on the church itself. Gavin has departed this life and what lies are told against him can do him no harm. But there are many that remain, and they've also been attacked. Your brothers and sisters. When Christ was told in Matthew 12, 47, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you, Christ responded, who is my mother and who is my brother? And pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mothers, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. There are people in this room today who are still coming under attack and they could use your support. Gavin would often remind those around him what his father used to say. Don't give me flowers when I'm dead. Our tears are wasted on Gavin. He doesn't need our support anymore. He's in a place without pain and suffering. But brothers and sisters of yours remain here and their integrity is being attacked and they've been dishonored. And some sit idly by allowing it to happen. And though their history is be, being re, re, rewritten, yours might be next. So I'd ask that if you have the character to do so, to stand next to those under attack. For their struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. To the directors and employees of Basasa, I would imagine what Gavin would say is the captain of the ship is not gone. The captain was always Christ. And as your brothers and sisters, we stand by you. This is not tragedy. This is time to celebrate a life lived for the glory of God. For Gavin, he has fought the good fight. He has finished the race. And he has kept the faith. Thank you very much. Um, please, again, uh, we, you realize uh, where we come from, we do things differently. Um, otherwise, somebody would have been reading. And, but we thought, rather, let's do things the way we um, do things around here. Um, this week or this month marks a sad time for a lot of people. Today we say rest in peace, Dr. Tandin Lovu. We say rest in peace, David Kekana. We say rest in peace, Isaac Mnam Chali. We say rest in peace, Ben Said. Rest in peace, Peter Fonda. Rest in peace, Corporate A.B. Makwana Mutsiri. And rest in peace, Kevin Watson, just to name a few. Now, as most of you would know, 
Kevin sp spent the bulk of his life in, in Gauteng or in Johannesburg. And um, he had a housekeeper. Up mom choice. Was was mom was 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 mom was mom choice mom choice took care of Gavin for the twenty odd years that um, Gavin has been shuttling in and out of Johannesburg between Johannesburg and PE, and today she said to me, um, I have to say something. Um, and as we welcome mom Joyce, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to understand that's why we're saying we're speaking about the Gavin we know. Uh, the <laughs> No baba o yinto yonke gimi. Ningene la kuno baba. Use yi jamb. Wazoba ipu sasa. Nam shangi se gui African club. Nalo baba. In petega ashe. Mina mu choice mazibuko. O se benza utata inko keli. Ye pusasa. Azang in a kala, Anganzueli. Anzang in lale, Ninga zile. Mankela. Bengib. Uncle of funding, what in that? Jehovah, I need. Greetings to everyone, in the name of Jesus. I have lost half of my body. Because that was everything to me. When I came to work in his house, June 2000, he showed me love and respect. He never treated me as a maid. He treated me as one of his family. My life has changed in a good way because of him. And I would like his children to treat me the very same way his father did. I thank God for his life. May his soul rest in peace. He was a very good man. He will receive blessings from the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. Thank you. Sabonga Mam Choice. As we say, Gavin touched a lot of people. And and today it is up to those people to share what they know about this giant that we speak about this morning. And Gavin, at some point, had a, we, would, we would discuss, I remember we had um, made a donation to a, a course for matriculants with taking a core or something like that. And when we came back, he said to us, we're only speaking about matriculants only when they get to matric. And, and he came up with an idea that said, perhaps what we need to do is to find and cultivate a, a, a different matriculant. Because the most interventions that we have today at Matric and Professor Nasser will speak and we will know about this. That most of the interventions that we put together are a, a, when young people get to the what, grade 10, grade 11. And he said, let's start and cultivate a young person from the, grade, for the, year, for, from the, the age of four years. We can cultivate a young person and a different matriculant. So instead of getting, picking them up along the way, let's create our own. And the idea of the 33 crutches 
at the, in the south of Johannesburg, of all places, an orange farm came about. And he said, perhaps let's find these creatures. Let's register them, let's support them, and let's see what type of young person is going to come up when they get to matric. Um, under the, the, the leadership of uh, Bishop Peter Ozier, we then started supporting those creatures as an organization. Most organizations will, will then buy space in newspapers and tell the world about what we do. This is the Gavin Watson that did not want to tell the world about what he did. We started supporting 33 catches in Orange Farm, where we would provide training, accreditation, and everything else that those kids needed. And today we can proudly say that there's been a difference in the, in, in the lives of those young people. And to tell that story, Makazuga, Makazuga, we thought, this is one of the principles of those catches. And we said, let her come and tell you the story of what happened there, uh, lest you think it's another publicity stunt. Well, um, that's my job, by the way. I greet everyone in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And all protocols observed. Let me take this opportunity to thank the program director and everyone in this place. I am Mrs. Ramatava T.E., best known as Makazi of El Shaddai Community Development in Orange Farms. I'm representing all creches and Abusele outreach in Orange Farms. For the past six years, Mr. Gavin Watson, together with Bishop Peter Sihonyane, started a program at Busasa, now known as African Global. 33 crashes from Orange Farms received different training and workshop on how to manage their centers and how to lay a good foundation on ECD, Early Childhood Development. Master Watson and the Busasa team changed our crashes educationally. He used to send transport twice a month to come and fetch us founders and teachers for training. He paid best facilitators to train us for free. Before we start every day, if he's around, he will come, Gavin, greet us personally with a smile on his face and make us to feel welcomed. He was also training teachers who was helping us, the founders, at our centers. We shall miss his fluent Kosa language. I remember the first time when I saw him, we were at the class and then they came. It was a group of, of, of people, they came and then they were greeting us, but him, Kevin, he was talking Kosa. I'm not, I'm not good in Kosa, that is why I don't remember what he was saying, but he was, he was speaking it fluently. 
to the family of Mr. Weston, you are in our thought and prayers. May our Lord be with you during this time. To our Bishop, Peter Skonyan, may you please pray for the family and all the founders and teachers of Orange Farm and all Busasa team to accept this passing on. May his soul rest in peace. Ulale ngotolo, Tata. I thank you all. Thank you, Makat. The name Tata um, came from young people in our youth facilities. These are young people that are in conflict with the law that get sent to us by the courts for a myriad of uh, um, alleged offenses. And, and Gavin used to go to those facilities. Remember this, that we're talking about is the chief executive officer of an organization. He had no business going to have a conversation with uh, stout gunners. He had no business going to go there and speak to people that he, had no, he doesn't know. He went there himself. And he created a lot of problems for us whilst he was there. Because he would walk in there at Mohale and the, the kids would mob him. And, and he would whip up his cell phone and he would give it to them and start calling home. Now in the midst of that, he forgot that we had a facility to run. So you would see now all these kids, this one is polishing his shoes, this one is on his head, this one is holding his cell phone. Now all of them want to talk. And once in a while he'd walk in there and there would be commotion when he walked into those facilities. I challenge you today, show me one chief executive officer who has time for stout kenners. Show me one chief executive officer who would go and speak to his staff and try as much as he, as he could to know them by name. Show me one chief executive officer who would, have, who would not have a private elevator and a driver and a secretary and a corner office in some massive building. We have a five hectare office park. He had no office. He did not need one. Now I challenge you, show me one chief executive in this, com in this country or anywhere in the world that operated the manner in the manner that he did. But this is the Gavin Watson that we know. And to tell that story, there's Tammy. Tammy had, uh, where's Tammy? It's on the elevator. Tammy, Tammy uh, used to be in the youth facility. He's wearing a funny uniform today. But Tommy will tell you the story of uh, his interaction with Gavin over the years. So, I love your socks. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, 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 Um, anyway, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tommy. Um, I don't even know how much time I have. I, ca I can talk for days sometimes. But, uh, you know, I'm, um, I first met Utata. Well, we, we like, Papa, like the Papa said, we used to call him uh, Utata at, um, at the youth centers. Um, I was at the youth centers as well, once upon a time. Um, I think what really caught my attention about him back then, I didn't even know whether he was a CEO of the company or not, but it was the fact that whenever he would come and address us, 
You know, we, we had great stands and he will sit there, we will sit right down the floor, you know, because he will tell us to sit on the floor, you know, our backsides and we will sit on the floor and uh, we'll be having our, um, we used to call it the post parade and uh, he will sit on the green stands and he will address us in Corsa. You know, I was, I was a kid back then and I was really fascinated by the fact that here is this white man, he speaks a fluent Corsa and, um, you know, it wasn't just him, you know, whenever they would walk in the center, would give us a cell phone so we can phone our, 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 our families and, and everyone else. You know, they had like uh, some lim unlimited airtime, you know, on the phone, and we would all want to phone. <clears throat> the papas as well, you know, he, he used to do that. He used to do that, and I somehow got very close to them, and I wanted to read something from, from, from my phone, but I don't have it right now. I remember um, we were involved in some community work where we would actually go out to different schools and talk to them about you know, the dangers of drugs and crime and all those kind of things. We, we would go to high schools. I remember we... Uh, we won, and I wasn't even, I didn't even, we didn't even know that it was some type of a competition or not, but we won and uh, we were called to uh, uh, Galaga Estate for awards, and for the very first time, you know, they took us from, from the youth centers to the head office, that on the very first time being at the head office, and um, they called everyone, the staff that was there. I think we had, they had like a very small staff back then. And um, we, 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 we went there. Uta Papas was there as well. I miss Cheki, I was his time. Everyone was there basically. And some of the people that are still with the company right now. And um, for the very first time, I actually got to see the other side of, of, of Utata. You know, that how much he actually loved the Lord. And I was, I was somehow getting introduced to Christ back then while I was also at the center. You know, I was beginning to be thrilled by everything that has to do with God. And when I heard him preach for the very first time when I was at the head of his, I was like, this is it, man. You know, I prayed to the Lord and uh, I want to thank God right now that I've been part of uh, Tata's life since 2001 for the first time when I went to the youth centers until, you know, until this happened. And uh, <clears throat> you know what they say about the first impression? He read from the book of Luke chapter 9, verse 62, and I think his brother must have said something similar to that, that, you know, he, he, he wasn't... He wasn't a person who would give up easily. You know, when he puts his mind on something, he makes sure that he carries it out. He sees it to, 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 to the end, you know. He was one man, you know, who pursued excellence in everything he did, be it business adventure, your project, whatever, you know, even in his walk with the Lord. He read from the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 62. I'll never forget that scripture. And uh, now this is Jesus, you know. He was saying, you know, any man who puts his hand on a plow and keeps looking back, he's not fit or worthy for the kingdom of God. And, and ever since, you know, from there, I, 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 I was, well, I was sentenced and everything, and, um, you know, we still kept in touch, you know, through uh, Miss Jackie and Umama here, you know, we kept in touch, and he, he, he really helped me with my studies when I was still inside. And um, to a point I remember they even brought me a computer, you know, because I was doing some studies that wanted a computer and, uh, you know, we had schools and whatever. And I came out and um, they still took me in, gave me employment. And now I started working very close to him and I got to know him. I had a privilege, you know, when he started this new thing where myself and some of my brothers, you know, we used to go out to different facilities and schools and other institutions. And, um, you know, he, he suggested that we have like a father, fa father and sons type of, type of talk. 
And really, I was, I was, I, 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 I suppose I'm one of the very few people who had such a privilege, you know, of spending like an uninterrupted hour with him. As busy as he was, you know, we would after prayer every morning, you know, we we, we would have prayer meetings every single morning. And after prayer meetings, when everybody has walked out and everything, we will take the small in our office and we will sit there and we would talk. We, we, we spoke about a whole lot of things. I think, you know, the, the only way one gets to know a person is through the things they say, you know, the way, the, the, you know, stuff that they say, you know, things that they discuss. You get to see their thoughts and their attitude surrounding certain issues. I mean, we spoke. We spoke about. We spoke to. We to that uh, from from subjects ranging ranging from relationships and you know what did we do on weekends. Like, you know, this is one of the parts that I would think maybe a few of us, you know, in Bosasa, we never knew he had a name, and we 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 really spoke about almost anything and everything. And for the past two years, all these years that I've known him, but I think for the past two years. His walk with Christ actually defined, now this is for me, you know, his walk with Christ for the past two years actually defined, you know, true, true faith to the Lord. And um, let me close with this. Probably uh, most of you guys have heard this before, but, and I've learned, you know, for the past few couple of months now, I've learned that no matter how good person you are, no matter how much you want to save the world, you, you, you know, you, you lend a helping hand, you want to help people and everything, no matter how much of a good person you are, there is that one person in somebody else's story, you are bad and evil. And I say this across, you know, everyone that is sitting here. So I just want to say, Lala uh, Tata. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tommy. Um, yeah, Ozan Matur. Yeah, it's that time. Let's say. Uh, do a little bit of this. What's that matter? Uh, feel free to, ne? please.
Deus, e é aquele sino, não é aquele sino. Eu falei, tem que é o meu dar o nome. I thought it was important that uh, we, this is what we need to do and I'm sure our friends will do it the right things. <laughs> Tell them this is what we used to do. <laughs> count or no count, this is what we used to do. <laughs> and we haven't seen nothing and I hope we have that time. <laughs> <laughs> the celebration in the TV to continue this in Germany. Thank you, program director. Um, this is what we get used to. Uh, if you look at me, I've been told so many times that before I comment on my daily schedule, I should run 10 kilo, kilo, kilometer to loosen up. And one of the commitments that I'm going to pledge today is Tata. In Kokeli, I will live up to your commitment. Thank you, Program Director. Greeting to all. Uh, my special greeting to Watson family, uh, the, the friends, and my fellow colleagues. Uh, my heartfelt condolences. Kevin was my father. When I joined this group, I was 18 years old. I'm one of the, the, the many of stories that I'll share today. Um, you know, when, when yesterday I got called in to say you have to add a few words on behalf of the masses of this organization, it was a wow. Uh, there's one thing that I'll do without a compromise. I will invoke the resilient spirit of Nkokeli. Nkokeli was, <laughs> he was a bob-up tree. He, he was a man and a half. He was bigger than life. You know, when I joined this organization in 1995, it was then called Meritam Holding PTY LTD. It was before when Nkokeli came through we call it the fateful winter in 1996. Uh, majority of us, I was fresh from school with an uh, exemption in metric. I didn't have any hope. My father was unemployed in 1989. When I joined this group back then, uh, one of the uh, uh, worrying phenomena it was, I found 95% of the workforce being tense for more than 10 years or even more. And the question that arises, how would I make impact in my life to further my studies? You know, little people, uh, uh, they will recall that back then the salary that you'll get, it was 11 rand a day. When you, when you will take that salary home, per week you'll get 77 rand. 308 rand a month. Uh, in Kokeri Watson, when we had his first mass meeting, we, most of us were skeptical. We were still militant then because we were back from Asapo, Sasko, and all that from high school. And when he addressed us, his first address it was, Bashegas. The M4 Awatse, the Wepai, 
And I look at him, I said, with skepticism, hey, long, long, you know, you know uh, it, it can be, you know, because with the discord between black people and white people back then, how would you believe a white man, uh, you know, talking closer in a fluent manner? One thing that comforted many of us, the youngsters, it was, there were many folks from PE who knew the Watson brothers. I mean, back then, sorry, back then there wasn't TVs, there wasn't social media, we didn't have more interaction with what was happening in PE. When I look at them, they had tears in their eyes to say, we know this family. This man is going to make a difference in our life. And I tell you, in first April 1997, Watson took a decision. All those TEMS employees, they converted to be permanent employees with full benefits. That was never heard of. Some of those members, when they used to pass away, we used to donate five rand, 10 rand to repatriate their mortals back home. Gavin didn't want to go through that. There were families coming there grieving to get a dignity, then there was no any French benefit. Uh, the untimely death of our father, mentor, spiritual leader, got all of us to reflect individually, collectively, of how best to remember his legacy. It is unfortunate that many of you who are not part of African global and subsidiaries. You will never know the man in Kokeli as he was. But some of us who really to retold the story of who he was. In Kokeli, to many of us, he was a Moses. He was a Moses. He took us from to the promised land and will forever be grateful for that. We knew um, the uncles, you know, Gavin's brothers, when Gavin used to share uh, most of his personal sacrifices that have been endured in the past. As time he was rightly saying, a lot of people they didn't knew that Gavin was tortured. You know, he used to took off his shirt to show the youngsters at the youth centers what has been true to get us through in this revolution. And for that, we will forever grateful for that. Gavin, you know, you see I'm being respectful, disrespectful now. Nkokeri was a selfless visionary leadership. He established Watson Academy to mentor, train, develop majority of our staff members. If there's one of them that will say he hasn't been given that opportunity uh, after this engagement, I will ensure as a payroll master he will have to come to me to account how could he tremble on Nkokeri's legacy. He spent quite a fortune to train majority of our employees. You know, it's always fulfilling to recall his philosophy. You know, Nkokeri defied the odds of corporate decorum or whatever they call it. If you, if you recall that, it's more than two decades that it's been with us. Five o'clock every morning, he will be the first one to open the office park. At most instances, he will be the last one to close the park. We were taught that, you know, as, as chubby as I look, 
I can go to Nando's, I can go to Spay, I can go to Megan Bean. As long as I don't seek the fruit of spirit, I will never conquer anything in life. That was his philosophy. Kokeri was a prayer warrior. Some of us, because we're too scared to hit the gym, we're realigning with this philosophy when there's a corporate fast. You know, that, that would be the opportune moment for majority of us to follow suit. He said, you know, uh, you know, during the course of the day, I'm part of the, 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 the warriors. In the afternoon, I can chow, then at least I can pray. Nkokeri was easily accessible. It was easily accessible. You know, I, I will share, you know, I shared with my, some of my colleagues that, you know, in payroll, you forgot that you are, you've done uploads, you've, you've stored certain archive in one wrong folder. There was one year where it happens that we uploaded the wrong folders to the bank. And, and fortunately, Carlos was hasty to press the button. We've paid wrong employees, the majority of them that have left. You know, I was called in to explain. I went to explain. His first reaction, he gave me a hug. He said, tomorrow will be a better person. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we will forever miss his firm handshake. You know, I've never came across Somebody will give a firm handshake, look you straight in your eyes, and say, Fondin, dear one, I die, so fun, but I'm a fan. It's a high data. I'm waking out at the evening, I said, No, so fun. You know, that, that, those are some of the, the, the impeccable legacies that who will never will forever cherish as we go through this route. He, 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 he changed lots of things that we couldn't easily accessible in the past. He had an open door policy. Gavin was always accessible. You know, you know my name is Nicholas, but he was calling me Nicky. You know, he always teased me, said, remember, you see, I'm the, I'm the expensive tour guide of the, the, the Smart Global Campus, you know. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, I was teasing my wife that and I said, you know, Nkokeri made us famous. Some of the ministers, some of the celebrities, I didn't have to go in queue or go to social media. They will come, I'll greet them, give them a handshake, said, you know, you want to learn to learn to learn to learn to learn is from Limpopo. No. I've entrusted my entire payroll process on him. And I can stand up here today and say, I've never stole one rent from Mr. Nkokeri. I've run that payroll like it was my own family business. And for that, we'll forever be grateful for the opportunity that was given to us. In closure, to Ms. Watson, family, we thank you for allowing Nko Keri to share his time, his wisdom, his knowledge, his leadership, and will forever cherish the memories. We plead with you, Ma, at Watson Clan, hold your heads high. This man was a pop-up tree. We shall leave his legacy. You know, there's one thing that he taught me to say, you are a story. You are a story that has to be shared amongst the millions of people out there. It's very rare
to take a young man in my teenage. I didn't go for an interview. I was a child in youth care worker at the youth centers. He said, Lentoanale, I want him up there to run that payroll. He had this amazing conviction. He understood majority of us. You know, when, when, when I look at my, my colleagues and friends and say, some of them with Nkokeli's assistance, they've got doctors, CA, auditors, engineers. He was selflessness. And for such, we should hold him dear. Gregas, Mchana Wakulo, we know you are in heaven. You always say we should not remember you of how you possess or how people perceived you to be driven certain cars, being in certain holidays and that. We should remember you, how you impacted each and every individual. As we depart here, the challenge to all of us is, what are we going to do when we get out there to make difference in people's life? Roth, Lindsay, Megan, you will always have a special heart in my heart. You've never had most time with your father. It was our father. But for such, we'll forever be grateful for that. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I again repeat that the Gavin Watson we know. Our Gavin Watson. Our Gavin Watson stories better told by the people that they interacted with, not those that are phoned in the middle of the night to try and find something. <laughs> you, you see, you see, the, the interesting thing about all of us here today is that all of us are going to follow him. He stood by him regardless. Because when somebody dies in the uh, communities where we come from, it does not matter whether yesterday we saw at each other. You go and you pay your respects regardless. And I'm glad here today, uh, and I'm not going to call him minister or premier or ban ban, umgan ga Kevin. This Gavin's friend. She's Gavin's friend. She's always been Gavin's friend. And she came to our office back. She did not be. She did not need to be apologetic about being Gavin's friend. And today I want to invite her, Mrs. Nomvola, to come and speak to these people about your friend. Amantla! Yes. Amantla! Yes. Long live the undying spirit of Kevin Watson! Long live! Long live, Long live the undying spirit of Kevin Watson! Long live. Long live! Let me take this opportunity on my behalf personally, my family, the extended family, genuine members of the African National Congress, of the Communist Party of Kosatu, of Sanko, communities of Kahiso, of Gauteng, of South Africa, convey our sincere and heartfelt condolences to the Watson family. I am in mourning and I respect my African culture 
and hence I made a public pronouncement that I'm moving away from public office because I'm mourning the passing on of my own husband and hence I'm dressed like this. I think those who know me, I would have been dressed in yellow or pink, very colorful and a short dress here, showing off the good that I am. But because our creator does his own things in his own way, he decided to put me down. Because he has a plan that I never knew, that there is a plan that he's got. For me, to travel this journey and give myself time to put myself first, my children, my friends and comrades, particularly those that have been persecuted because they've never been made by the media. They've never been loved by the media. And they still do not owe anyone in the media and worse, those who have hated us with passion and even tried to kill us at one point and we survived and still want to kill us alive and bury us alive today. And I am going to be very brief just to say to the Watson family, they never loved you because of your conviction. They still will not love you today. They will never forgive you for who you are. Just like Jesus Christ, who was persecuted, yet he was sent on earth to come in and become the symbol, the symbol of faith, the symbol of pain. And many even questioned him to say, explain to us who are you? And sadly, Gavin has left before Adrian Person understood who Gavin is. And sadly, our institutions, those that we thought would be institutions for social justice, have been deprived to hear from a peace-loving South African how he has found himself to relate to some of us. We get persecuted because we believed in a fair and just society. Everybody talks about the Bosasa family. I want here this comrade Tozi, and I'm going, he's very short, if he could stand these are the men, if you see a fault on Nomvul about my resistance, pick it up on that man. Put the blame on him. <laughs> Comrade Tozami Lepuata is one of those few people who have nurtured some of us in the civic movement, in the underground days, under the United Democratic Front, to work and even do that that will not make your enemy happy. And if your enemy is not happy, you must know you are on the right track. <laughs> and next to Upratozi, he I'm supposed to just say Comrade Tozami, but for me he remains Bratozi. I don't know why, but he's Bratozi. Next to Bratozi, there's a there's a lady, there's a comrade, there's a sister. There's a sister-in-law of mine. There's a South African woman who has been deprived of love because her husband hated poverty, hated unemployment, was not loved by the media, but he was loved by the people of South Africa. And unfortunately, until today, our own systems and stuff have not told us who has killed Krisani and who have comrade Dimpo in Krugazov. So they will never forgive me. So. The mistake is that we associate it with a white family, supposed to be white, supposed to be hating, but because of their love and their respect of our creator and their own belief that we are all created in the same image of God, they broke the racial barriers in the Eastern Cape 
they spread their wings of resistance to this lousy area of the West Rand and they spread up to the Northern Cape, the Western Cape and everywhere. Before I met Gavin, the person I know, actually, if Babu Zondo can come to ask me or Adrian Basson, how did I come to know Gavin Watson? I would say they must ask Ronnie Watson. And I would wish that he stands up. That's Ronnie Watson. These are white people who, when it was not fashionable to fund the ANC for ulterior motives, they gave their all. These are white people, a family, a community, who believed that Contextualizing theology is very important. You can't talk about the kingdom of God and not talk about the injustices on earth. Under the stewardship of their own father, their own family, and now the third generation listening to the kids and the, 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 the nieces and nephews, you just feel this thing of the Watsons runs in the genes. It runs in the family. And it is all because of the foundation of loving thy neighbor as you love thyself. I'm standing here, and I really want to say, in Sisutu Hutri, Lifuli Kopanya Malapa. Secondly, Nesintu Gutiwa Makshoni Lwe Giazola. I really want to plead with South Africans. I've seen it happening with my own son. I've seen it happening with my own husband. But because now I was sitting at home following social media, don't do it even to your worst enemy, News 24, to report the death before even the family could even collect itself. Don't do it. The family has to come together. The family has to come together. We saw it. They did it with Krisani. They actually uh, flouted all the pictures with blood and everything. And yet, we are You even stop, stop talking loud. You soften the way you communicate. Our social media has broken Ubuntu Betu. It has broken Ubuntu Betu. I'm sitting here. What News 24 is reporting is about a former minister of water who was given chicken pieces and whiskey who is here. My time will come. I will tell you what Gavin has done. and not what Agrizi is saying. But I will also tell you what Agrizi has done. My time will come. For now, family, friends, comrades, fellow South Africans, when we go and lay Gavin's remains in Port Elizabeth, what we must remember is, his spirit will live amongst us. And those that believe that his spirit will live amongst us, remember you will never be a celebrity. The very fact that you're saying long live his spirit, then write yourself out, you'll never. The only thing you'll do, you will sell newspapers because it will be all about the bad and the ugly that people don't know about Orange Farm, about Kahiso, about our high schools in Kahiso, 
about senior citizens in Kahiso who used to get Christmas hampers, and yet you've got multinationals outside of Kahiso, Chemdo, SAB selling alcohol, Sasko selling millimil. Ask me what have they done for that community, the minds that are here, our children grow up knowing that it is a mountain, only to find that it is a mine dump that has inflicted unhealthy conditions on our bodies. Capital has no friend. Capital is evil. Gavin was not a capitalist. Gavin was a freedom fighter. Gavin loved life. What he was doing together with a greasy, only his creator will deal with it. Who are we to judge? What we know, what we know is that there is a day called a judgment day. And where we are, we know that every day Gavin used to say, forgive us our trespasses. What we know, Gavin used to say every day, every hour, is that let your will be done. So to the family, let's hold on to that Lord's prayer because when Jesus left, was about to leave this world, his own disciples asked him, so when you leave, Master, and yet you've been the one who used to pray for us, what is it that we must say? What is it that we must, how must we then connect with our Creator? And then he said, when I am no more, you must kneel and say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is done on heaven. But the most important thing is to say to the Watson family, we said thy will be done. So the humiliation, the insults, the attacks, the misinformation. You didn't say let thy will be done, but please make sure that they don't insult me, they don't hurt me, they don't... You didn't choose what you want the Creator to do with you. So let's accept. Sipilela eso nweni. Siza uchabala lela eso nweni. Kuze kubengu napakate until kufika usuku lokwetu. That's what we must do. And to thousands and from thousands and thousands of members of the NC and for the NC. Thank you for supporting the NC. When it was not fashionable. You never thought you'll get a tender because we're selling brand woods and flotsam in PE and you became victims of your own support. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for taking some of the leaders today who will be scared to associate with you to school, to universities, looking after them coming from exile, building houses for them, taking their kids to school. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for saving senior citizens of Kahiso who would have been buried as paupers. They may be called my sisters, that you buried my sisters. I care no less. Thank you for taking care of the vulnerable in Kahiso. Thank you for taking care of the vulnerable in Duncan Village. Taking care of the vulnerable in the Northern Cape, in Limpopo. Thank you. Thank you for being yourselves. My time will come to tell my story, not what Adrian Person wants to do in writing his book and giving me a deadline of the sixth. Asking me, how have you come to know Gavin Watson? I've come to know those who are here in News 24 and everybody. I've come to know Gavin Watson as a freedom fighter.
And your question that says other women have actually moved distance to themselves from Tiambo and everywhere. I have never distanced myself and I will explain why. I'm a child of Kahiso, of Krugazov. Those who come post-94 will not know me. I've sacrificed at the age of 15, from the age of 15. I've done things and I will associate with those that subscribe to the just cause. And this family was one of those families. So if you ask me, why did I frequent <laughs> the Busasa offices? It's because the Busasa offices were those, some of the offices that were friendly for the ANC. Very accessible, footbang and amashoni of identifying with the NC. Until now, those of us, some of us in the NC are running away from identifying with our old dear friends. President Nelson Mandela said, said when he was asked by the American head of state and he was on his way to see, to, vis to visit Fidel Castro, they said, how can he upon his release go and visit Castro, a non-communist? And what was his response? Nobody, nobody must tell him who are his friends. Because those are the people that he has been with even when they themselves, his own friends, were persecuted and him was once called a terrorist. So this is a family that never shied away from a non vula this is a family that never shied away from a search Mukunkonyani or a terrorist who associated with Winnie Mandela when Winnie said, with our three cents matches box, we shall liberate our country. We hosted Winnie here. So I see the markets on Twitter. Hala. I will, my time will come. My story will not be told through Adrian Person on News 24. My story will be told by yourselves. My story will be told by yourselves. Our story, our story of how we saved Ekuruleni East Rand during the so-called black-on-black violence, Comrade Ronnie Watson, you know, I was the poor, you know, you were still living in that uh, Don Park. How the very Watson family had to help our self-defense units here in Swaneville. My time will come. My time will come. I'm not supposed to be saying much, but this is a family affair. So I'm not in a public space. I'm with my family. Papa, don't shy away. Never shy away. Whatever that has happened, whoever has done it, if it was not God's wish, Gavin would have survived. So that's the baseline. Whatever and whoever and however, he would have survived if it was not his time. Now he's with, he is with his creator, and he must never be an angel that sleeps forever. He must be an angel that is very active, that is vibrant, an angel that can teach us how not to trust too much like him. I still say, just like Nomzam, many chastised her until she passed on and many loved her and even put on dukes and actually said, Mama, we love you. Yet they insulted her during her, her life. Her story is known by the people of Orlando, the people of Orange Farm. They know Nomzam better than the writers of the stories of Nomza. So the story of Gavin Watson is yet to be told. But you know what? It's not for the world to know because he was here as a servant of our creator. He has done his bit. 
It's now time for him to rest, and he must just rest, not sleep. He must rest and become a true angel and lift all of you. I don't know this new company. I know Diambo, then I know Busasa. Le? Don't shy away from your identity. That's what is important because I'm saying there are people who are running SOEs today. There are people who have been premiers and are premiers today. There are people who are ministers today. There are people who live in lavish houses today, better than Gavin's house in PE. Yet they came with nothing from exile. There are people who are driving smart cars. And there are journalists who are making money by the sales of their newspapers. And today they get shocked to hear that Gavin drove a Corolla. It means you don't know the damn man. Yeah. Once more, let's continue to say, forgive us our trespasses. But of importance for all of us, I'm carrying something that I never thought it would happen to me, but it has happened. Let's continue to say, let thy will be done and let thy will be done. Gavin, you can see us here. Inyuaki zimtengisile. He used to call people inyuaki. Zimtengisile namhlanje. But what is important, uyisbone lokuthi. Love them all, but trust no one. Wayoba huka, wabatintita, today they've got more cars than you. They've got a bigger body than you. They are filthy and rich more than you. But spiritually, 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 you were wealthier and richer than them. May the angels welcome you, Kevin. May you find comfort in the bosom of Abraham. May your parents celebrate your coming and ascension into heaven. Forgive them. Forgive them, Gavin. Good night, Gavin. Set your alarm clock so that you can wake up and be amongst us. And most importantly, remember, Love them all. Trust no one. Thank you.
Chabón. Maybe we must translate that for those that don't understand. The tide will turn. It's only a matter of time, the tide will turn. There's three small videos that you want to play, and as we do so, I'm going to ask the choir to get here to prepare for Umfundi, so to give us our daily bread. That. There's a day that we did mad. Believe I was expecting something else different. The time when I met with Gavin, it was someone else. Because the way he's talking to people, the way he's carrying himself, he's not carrying himself like the CEO of the company. That's one thing amazing about him. Normally, people are having companies. You, you feel them in a the distance. You could see this, the man in charge, you know. You could see this, I'll say, boldness. But Gavin, it's so simple. So simple, you know, so simple. And uh, the belief is, most of the people who are like Gavin, you don't normally just meet them. Those people, they've got their offices somewhere else. It's very rare to see them. But Gavin, it's not like that. You see Gavin every time when you want. If you're at head office, head office, you can meet with Gavin. He'll greet you even shaking your hand. But people that they are really on his position, normally they don't do that. He said he had a different practice of carrying himself, which is very good. I was so amazed because, you know, um, I was like shocked when he was greeting us. Um, you know, you know Uncle Kevin he will say, Molueni my daughter. We, we were like shocked. How can this guy talk like, calls a language like that? And then we never met him before, but uh, there were like rumors that our CEO, our CEO is, you know, is very influ influential with uh, this uh, causal language. Uh, and then it was like we were happy for the whole night, talking and discussing about this uh, CEO, amazed, where is this person coming from? And uh, until now, we, uh, I start now to engage most of the time, especially when I was at the airport. He used to uh, fly every Friday, and then it's when frequently now I met with uh, Nko Kelly. Right. 
Now, just to give you, this was not planned. This was done in 2016. 2016. These were some of the students that they got to interact with, with Gavin. That young girl you saw was one of the young people from one of our facilities in DR. We flew her over to come and have tea with Gavin. Again, I challenge you. Show me one CEO who do something like that. Uh, uh, we are welcoming the Mfundi, Sijuan. Right, one song. Uh, Show me sit down, Fundis. It's all us. And oh, my soul, so weary when trouble comes and my heart better be. And I am still waiting in the silence until you come. And sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand on my own. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. But I shoulder you raise me up to more than I can be you raise me up so I can stand on my own you raise me up to walk on me see officials, all the family, friends, um, African global staff for coming uh, 
supporting the family uh, for such a difficult time. We bless the Lord that it was all His will. Hallelujah. I'd like for us to go to the Word of God. We're going to read uh, Psalm 23. It's amazing. I uh, actually prepared this word when I was uh, out of South Africa. Why I have peace in my heart, why I've come to term with what has happened uh, to Mr. Watson, is that last week the Lord showed me that we had this big gathering and I uh, saw so the Karen Bosasa staff and the, the former other staff coming and then I was asked to share the word of God and in the dream they were talking to me about uh, psalm and then as I was coming uh, to join the meeting I received a phone call and it was um, Gavin calling me and as I picked up the phone it was somebody else speaking to me but it was his voice. And then I was shocked, why is he that he's not in the meeting? Because it's very unusual of him. You know, all the um, uh, prayer meetings, he has always been there. I didn't understand that. I uh, shared uh, with Mam Tandi. Uh, I think three days later, I uh, received a call that he was no more then I understood that God knew it and God had found that it was time for him to go and rest. So just to comfort the family and to comfort all the friends, to say that God is always in control. Amen. So please go with me to Psalm 23. This was his favorite psalm. Early this year, even last year, he had... Um, expound a lot on this uh, psalm. Those that have been praying with him, we have the privilege of being uh, some of those that were praying with him in the morning. It restores my he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. So uh, shortly I'd like to talk around this topic, that death is not the end. Death is not the end. But as we know, all of us, that we are here today, our desire is to honor and remember the life of Mr. Gavin Joseph Watson, Kokeli, as he liked to be called. When the reality of death set in, we are often taken by shock. One of the ways to work through our hurts, through our pain, is in losing somebody that we love dearly, is to share stories remembering the person and the positive difference that he has made in this world. You know, many times there are those people in the world that when they've gone to be with the Lord, you ask God why. And Gavin was one of them. We know that Brother Gavin, like everybody here, was not perfect. But we also know that it touched many lives. It touched thousands of lives positively. 
His life was all about people. He loved people. He loved to make difference in lives of people. His life was about purpose and passion. He was passionate about everything that he was doing. Passion and perfection define Mr. Watson. Passion and perfection. He was passionate about everything that he was doing and he was passionate about God and the things of God. It has been very good for me to sit again with the family, with the friends and, and the staff, you know, just to share things um, around him and, and to hear that Kokeli loved the Lord truly. It was not something that I noticed myself, but everyone could witness that. He loved the Lord and people could tell how he would encourage the children, the grandchildren, to always pray with them, to teach them the Lord's prayer as uh, it, was, it was said here. You know, he will always wake his children early in the morning, even when they were on holidays, and pray with them, you know, to instill the prayer life, the lifestyle of prayer in their lives. The first time I came to this organization, I was shocked to see how much people could pray. Basically, it's probably the only organization in this country or across the world that meets, that gather to pray, that holds all night prayers. Praise the Lord. Amen. He was a loving father, a grandfather. He loved his family. He was a family man. He was a loving boss with a big heart for his employees. He did not make the difference of race. He hugged everyone warmly. He never had an office that was to say here, so um, I just have to go through what was laid in my heart as well. Hallelujah. You know, he never had an office. He would walk through the office park and greet everyone that he would meet including cleaners, gardeners, and he will say a prayer with them. And Gavin will never end a phone call without saying a prayer. That's how I know him. You will speak over the phone, whatever the topic is, but your conversation will always end with a prayer. He knew how to put scriptures, the word of God, in practice. And most challenges that they've come across as a family, like himself, is because they choose not only to believe the word of God, but to put the word of God into practice. Like James said, show me your faith, and I will ask you your works. There are people that believe in the word of God, but they've never put the word of God into practice. But they believed, he believed in the word of God, and he put it into practice. It's never easy to lose a loved one. And I know this afternoon it's not easy to accept, to come to terms with what has happened. So this afternoon, in the few moments that I have, I'd love for us to turn our hearts toward God, who is the giver of all comfort and the restorer of our souls. I'd like for us to turn our hearts to him and look at this scripture, look at this uh, uh, Psalm 23 that I have read, and I hope that through looking at this Psalm, all of us might find comfort. This book of Psalm is not classified in the eschatological books in the Bible. Yet, when you hear David saying that, I will stay in the house of the Lord forever and ever, it speaks about eternity. 
There are four things that this book addresses. And I'm going to touch maybe three of them. First of all, this book speaks of the relationship. It speaks of relationship with God, with the shepherd, and the benefits of that relationship. And secondly, it speaks about the trials and challenges that one will definitely encounter during their walk, during their journey with the Lord. It speaks of the sustenance and the victory of God over adversities and adversaries. And it also speaks about the ultimate victory and eternal rest that we will have in God's presence. So, I will probably cover just three of them. David, before he became a king, he was a shepherd. He grew up as a shepherd. A big part of his life, he was a shepherd. So he took a metaphor from the words that he knew best and used it to explain his relationship with God. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So David likened God to a shepherd. So what David was saying here, the point that he was making here, was that David was no longer the leader of his life, but that he had put his complete trust in following God as his shepherd. He made God the very shepherd of his life. Now, in knowing Kokeli, I know this was true and very true of him. He embraced having a relationship with God. He embraced having a relationship with Jesus Christ. He was a very strong man. He was a very strong man. When you see him, you know, you can tell that this man is strong. But as strong as he was, he came to realize that he could never be strong enough on his own. He could never be strong enough on his own. There was something missing. He came to realize that there is something broken all around us. There is evil and pain and suffering, and there has to be an answer for that. He came to believe that the evil in this world had a direct link to people turning away from God. Many times in the world, people choose to go against God's standard, and because of that, this world lives with both good and evil. But then he came to understand that Jesus came to the world to die on the cross for our sins, to make things right for all the wrong things that we have ever done. In the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 8, the Bible says, But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So Jesus took the punishment that we deserve. He died in our place for all the wrong things we have ever done or will ever do. I want you to understand that this word that I'm sharing, as uh, the MC said, that Mfunis will come and share the bread of life. This is a bread that God is giving to us today. Brother Gavin is going to be with the Lord, but this word is addressed to me and to you. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says in John 3.16 that for God so loved the law, uh, 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 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever will believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. But Jesus Christ came to this earth and died to give us a gift. And friends, it is a gift that gives hope. We receive eternal life through putting our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ. Amen. So Mr. Watson and Kokeli made Jesus the Lord of his life, not necessarily because his father, not necessarily because his grandparents, they, they, were, they were serving the Lord or they were missionaries, 
but it was his personal choice because salvation is by choice. He came before the Lord to realize without the Lord, he won't have any help. Hallelujah. As Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So he decided that. Because of that, he could know how and what David meant in Psalm 23 saying, he leads me beside still waters. He makes me lie down in green pastures and he restores my soul. God was able to meet David in the midst of many troubles. David's life was far from easy. In the midst of being chased by his enemies or hiding alone in the cave in the darkness of, uh, of night, David knew that the Lord was the one who was going to sustain him. God was the one that brought goodness and grace his way during his life. God alone is the one that brings rest. And many times when God brings rest, it's not going to be the way that we expect it. Because God does not work the way we expect him to work. Hallelujah. His ways are far above our ways. When he brings rest, it might not come the way that we are expecting. Life is hard. We struggle with pain. We struggle with illnesses and the grief of losing loved ones. But God can take us from our situation and bring us to a place of rest when we can lie down beside quiet waters, quiet waters where our souls can be refreshed. Our lives on this earth are hard and painful. Sometimes things happen that we don't fully understand why. But our encouragement is that one day all of our hurt and pain will be over. That one day we can spend all eternity in heaven. Hallelujah. Nkokeli fought all the, the accusations around him. He fought all the allegations around him, but not in a conventional way, with prayer. He chose to fight with God. Hallelujah. And that was his style. He trusted God with everything, unashamedly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But now, his fight is finally over. And he's enjoying rest in heaven. Praise the Lord. He fought the good fight of faith. He has run the race and he has finished his course. He was never afraid of death because he knew in whom he believed. He was always looking forward to it, looking forward to be with the Lord when his time comes. He has gone to a better place, a much better place than this. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says, No eye has seen, no ear heard, nor the heart of man imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. So I imagine that heaven is going to be like that, more beautiful than an eye has seen or ear has heard. It's absolutely unimaginable. Kokeli has gone through his struggle on this earth, but now, as a follower of Christ, he is beholding the beauty beyond our comprehension. He has found rest in heaven. Hallelujah. This afternoon, I want us to realize in the midst of this time of mourning that there is good news. Hallelujah. There is good news that through Christ, death is not the end. That through Christ Jesus, Death is not the end. When you die in Christ, hallelujah, it's not the end. It's just the beginning of another life and a better life. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. We can know that we have eternal life with God when we die in Christ. And heaven is an incredible place. The Bible describes heaven. When you read Revelation 21, verse 3 through 4, the Bible says about heaven, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. For Mr. Watson, the former things have passed away. Hallelujah. The former things have passed away. Is there a place where people don't cry? Is there a place where people don't feel pain? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No more death in heaven. No more goodbyes. No more grief. No more sorrow. No more sin. And no more pain. In heaven, the Bible says we will walk in streets of gold. In heaven, there will be a family reunion. Hallelujah. We will be reunited with those who have gone before us. In heaven, we will experience peace that is beyond comprehension. And most importantly, we will be with Jesus. And we will finally see the great love of God in all its glory. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 38 through 9, the Bible says, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, for those who have allowed God to be the shepherd of their lives through trusting in Jesus as the Lord and Savior, they can have peace in God. Hallelujah. They can have peace as David wrote, David said, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David knew that there was peace in dying for those who believe. There is peace that we can be with God forever. For all of us here today, we have come face to face with the fact that our lives will not last forever. Hallelujah. The Bible says that man's life is, is like mist, it's like vapor. It appears only in short time and it passes away. Hallelujah. Our days are numbered. David is the one who prayed that, Lord, teach me how to number my days so that I can apply wisdom. Our days are very short here on earth. Hallelujah. We have longer time in heaven because there the Bible says we will live in eternity. There is no way that you can compare your life here with what God has prepared for you. Praise God. We will live eternally. There is no limit. And that the better life. Hallelujah. So this life is short. Now when David shares that God is like a shepherd, it begs the question, is your faith and your confidence in the one and only shepherd who can save and protect you from all eternity? Hallelujah. This metaphor drips with an understanding of how God reaches out to the lost sheep. Sheep are animals, as you will know, that are not intelligent. Without a shepherd, they are prone to wander. Hallelujah. And that is precisely our human condition. Without God, our shepherd, we are prone to wander. But for those of us who simply place our faith and trust in Jesus, God comes down and rescues us. And rescues us who are lost sheep. And he establishes a relationship. And when 
when the time comes, he will receive us home. Indeed, today is a maker. He will see eternity, eternity with his Savior. Hallelujah. And one thing that I know for sure that he will beg of you if he could speak to us. The one thing that he will beg of you is will you one day join me with God in heaven as well? This is the ultimate price we all need to win. Hallelujah. Everything else will pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. We came naked, as Job said, and we will go back naked. Hallelujah. But the ultimate and the greatest victory is to know the Lord and die in the Lord. Hallelujah. And dying in keeping the faith. And that's what Kokeli did. Are you with me? That's what Kokeli would want for any one of us sitting here today. And that the ultimate desire of God for you and me to know him, live for him, and die in him. That's God's desire for all of us. And that's what Brother Kevin will want for each and every one of us. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not going to go back and sit without giving each and every one of us this opportunity. I want for all of us to bow our head in prayer as I'm closing. Death does not make announcements when it comes. We have seen with our father, our grandfather, our friends, Death does not make any announcement when it comes. If death had to knock at your door today, are you ready and able to dwell in the presence of the Lord forever? And I would like to give you that opportunity today. And this is what Kokeli would want. And this is the ultimate desire of God for you. Not to perish, but have eternal life. Before I pray for the family, with our head bowed, I want all of us to say this prayer. Will you kindly repeat after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I am not perfect. I have made mistakes. But I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. Today, I ask for your forgiveness as I commit my life to following you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. We're going to pray. I'd like to pray. All of us keep our head bowed and going to pray for the family and just commit them into the hand of the Lord and pray that the Lord will comfort them. Father God, I pray that you will fulfill your promise that you will never leave your people comfortless, but you will come for them. You reveal your love and grace to your grieving children, to your grieving servants, and cause them to hear you say, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Help them, O oh Lord, to turn to you in true faith and find comfort in your presence, that they may also have a sure confidence in you for all that is to come until the day breaks and these shadows flee away. Thank you, Father, for your divine protection. Thank you for your angels, O oh Lord, that encamp around them, O oh Father God. As the angel comforted Jesus, Lord God, I pray that your angel will comfort them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, and everyone said, Amen.
Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, man of God. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to almost the end of our program. Um, before I wrap up, there's a, a quote that I would like to share with you. My Angelo writes, and I quote, I've learned that whenever I decide something with an open heart, I usually make the right decision. I've learned that even when I have pains, I don't have to be one. I've learned that every day you should reach out and touch someone. People love a warm hug or just a friendly pat on the back. I've learned that I still have a lot to learn. I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people never forget how you made them feel, close quote. And certainly we will never forget how Gavin made us feel. Just on the announcement side, ladies and gentlemen, those that have not heard, the funeral will be held in PE on Tuesday, the 3rd of September, 2019. Service will start at 11 o'clock at the Feather Market Centre. Um, I know there's been a request from the members of the press. Some of them wanted to do whatever they wanted to do. I'd like to announce that we can, uh, there's a meeting scheduled for 11 o'clock on Sunday at uh, the Feather Market Centre. For those of you who want to come and see what the place looks like and whatever else and whatever else. In closing, in, in closing, we'd like to thank all of you for coming, coming through here and we'd like to thank you for your attendance. At this, uh, at this uh, occasion, we'd like to, to thank our suppliers, I've seen, we'd like to thank our clients, I've seen some of them here this morning, thank you very much. Our clients that have become part of our family over the years, thank you very much for, for your support and we value your time. Um, we'd like to, to thank the African Global Team um, under the leadership of the chairperson. Thank you, Pastor Francis, for, for your time here this morning. Big thank you to the Little Falls Christian Center that uh, when they heard our cries at number 11, they were amenable to making sure that we can be able to occupy this place and make sure that this uh, man is, is, is celebrated in a dignified and just manner like we did here this morning. Thank you very much to the Little Falls Christian Community Church. Um, the men played keyboards, Terence and the young man called Olani, for us no more. But when something happened, they came running and they said, what can we do? And so all the nice things that you've been seeing and the artworks um, at his own time, I uh, don't think he has a, girl, a girlfriend yet, but so at his own time, he was able to make sure that we were able to do so. Thank you very much for your time. Um, members of the media, we appreciate your time here this morning. Um, we hope, we hope sincerely that you'll be able to tell the other side of Gavin's story, frankly and honestly. And we understand you don't have to. We understand you don't have to, but uh, we sincerely hope that for once you've been here today, you've heard, you didn't hear from me, well, I get paid to lie. <laughs> you didn't hear it from me because I spin anything and everything. You heard it from the people themselves. And if you don't believe them, bless your heart. To the families, friends who are here, who did not run away, who did not hide, who thought it is important for them to come and show face, we appreciate you being here. We appreciate your words of comfort. The family would also like to thank all of you for your text messages, your prayers, your flowers. Um, 
they might not have been able to respond to each one of them. Um, but my, my instruction is to say to you, they've noted your messages and they appreciate your words of comfort and may you not stop only with them. And, and the African global community would, uh, would like to thank this family for allowing us to hold this man. Over 20 years of giving, you gave self selflessly. And today, people have shared how giving has touched them. And, and we really appreciate you today. From, from where I said thank you very much for allowing me to stay this program this morning, travel safely, and may the good and gracious Lord be with you and bless you. God bless Gavin Watson, and God bless Africa. Thank you very much. <laughs>